Minoxidil has been a beacon of hope for many and for decades. But like with any solution, it comes with its own set of challenges. So hair thinning can happen because of a lot of factors like inflammation or uh, oxidative stress on the hair. So these can happen because of not only environmental factors, but also internal factors. Retencil is one ingredient that combats all of these and it actually helps in promoting hair growth. Hi, so a lot of patients come and ask me, is minidoxin the only ingredient that's going to help me with my hair loss? No, that's not true. Watch the full video to know your options. So let's try to talk a little bit about uh, shedding induced by minoxidil. You see, minoxidil um, leads the hair to get into an anagen phase, the growth phase, from its resting phase, which can be the catagen or the telogen phase. So when it rapidly moves from one uh, growth phase to the other, there can be some some amount of shedding that is observed. So you see, minoxidil can induce hair loss initially and this also happens when you leave the minoxidil. Minoxidil is also quite notorious for causing scalp irritation. A majority part of it is dependent on the solvent in which it is present. So sometimes it's propylene glycol and it can cause a little bit of irritation but some of it is also because of the minoxidil itself topically. So you might observe there is a scaling or redness or an itchiness that tends to happen with minoxidil. Minoxidil works by the virtue of vasodilatation, which means that it is increasing the blood flow into the hair root. It doesn't really work on uh, the DHT blocking aspect, which means the hormonal aspect that leads to hair loss. So whatever hair that you see has, has grown is because of the increased blood circulation to the hair follicle. As soon as you stop this treatment, uh, there is an increased hair loss that is observed. So the hair will come back to its normal position, uh, normal state of hair loss once the minoxidil is stopped. Now let's talk about the dosage of minoxidil. So minoxidil is known to be used at least twice in a day, morning and evening, 1 ml on the scalp. Uh, most commonly it is produced as a 2% and a 5% formulation. Uh, so for males it's 5% and for females 2%. Uh, these days it's also popular to use a 5% only once daily by the females and we've seen very good results with that. Some common side effects with uh, minoxidil are redness, flaking, itching, and scalp irritation. It can also make the hair frizzy and coarse and dry. So it is recommended to use a hair serum right after. There are some other side effects. Minoxidil can cause postural hypotension, which means this medicine was traditionally used in hypertension. So it can lead to systemic side effects like uh, blurry vision, dizziness, lightheadedness, sometimes chest pain and palpitations, even with uh, topical minoxidil. So make sure that you speak to your physician in case you experience any of these side effects with minoxidil so that it can be discontinued. Now let me tell you a little bit about minoxidil non-responders. You see, a lot of people, they don't respond to minoxidil even with uh, known androgenic alopecia, whether male or female. So this is because of lack of a, a receptor, which is called the sulfotransferase receptor. A lot of people don't have this receptor in the hair follicle. Now, once minoxidil reaches the hair root, it is converted into minoxidil sulfate. So, it, this one, uh, this minoxidil sulfate is absorbed by the sulfotransferase receptor in the hair follicle. A lot of people don't have this. So, you'll see a lot of people don't respond to minoxidil at all. Because minoxidil induces hair growth uh, by increasing the blood supply to the hair follicle, this is considered a lifelong medication. As long as you use the minoxidil, you will have thick growth and the hair will remain um, dense and the shedding will stop. But as soon as you leave the minoxidil, you'll see that the shedding increases and you might even lose the hair that you have gained while, while applying this minoxidil. So you have to understand that minoxidil is a lifelong commitment. So it can be a little bit of inconvenience to apply this serum hair roots twice daily. And apart from that, uh, there is a cost of, uh, of the treatment. So to get off minoxidil, it is advised to uh, make the twice daily application to once daily, then alternate days, and then two to three times in a week before you completely wean off minoxidil. So how long does the withdrawal effects of minoxidil last, you know, once you taper off this minoxidil? So it can last anywhere between weeks to a few months. The rate of hair growth will resume to what it was prior to the commencement of the treatment. As soon as you stop the minoxidil, the hair will come back to its original position. Depending on your own hair growth cycle and the duration of time you have been applying minoxidil, the duration and the severity of the withdrawal effects of leaving minoxidil can differ from person to person. So always prioritize 
uh, in identifying the root cause of your hair loss. It's always advisable to speak to a physician or your dermatologist before starting or before leaving minoxidil. So what are the benefits of Indian cells? So it not only activates the dormant hair follicles, it also nourishes the scalp, it improves the density of the hair, it improves shedding and it protects the hair from environmental damage. So are there any side effects of Redensil? Because the, this ingredient has been tested extensively in clinical trials and also it is a natural uh, ingredient made from botanicals, it's fairly safe to be used in both males and females of adult age group. But it's always better to start with a clinical consultation uh, with a physician who can recommend if this ingredient is meant for you depending on the kind of hair loss that you're facing. So how is Redensil different from Minoxidil? Let's talk about uh, differences between these two ingredients. So minoxidil works on vasodilation. So it means that it improves the blood flow to the hair follicle. And because there's better blood flow, the hair starts to grow thicker. Now, redensil works on the, like I said, it's on the metabolism of the stem cells in the root sheath. Now, let me talk about the effectiveness of redensil versus minoxidil. So redensil, because it is a natural compound, we've seen that uh, generally in most of the people, the hair quality becomes thicker and the hair becomes much more better. So retensil works on energizing the hair root. So it not only stimulates the hair follicle, it improves the nourishment to the hair. Now how does minoxidil work? Minoxidil works on the sulfotransferase activity of the hair follicle. It vasodilates, so it means that it's improving the blood circulation. It's out of people, this receptor is not present. The person lacks sulfotransferase activity. Minoxidil may not be effective in a lot of people. Now let's talk about the treatment duration of redensil versus minoxidil. So redensil has to be used uh, for a couple of months to actually see a good result. Minoxidil on the other hand can generate very quick results that can start showing within 2-3 to three weeks. But it is a lifelong treatment. As long as you use this product, you will see the hair is better and thicker. But as soon as you leave minoxidil, you might see an increased hair loss. These kind of uh, side effects, they don't happen in redensil. Because it's a, it is a hair nourisher, it can safely be used for long periods of time, might take longer to show results. So because Redensil works on nourishing the hair follicle, there isn't an excessive hair loss that is seen after starting Redensil. Whereas this is not the case with Minoxidil. Sometimes when we start Minoxidil, you can see an increased hair loss and that is transient. That happens because the hair actually is stimulated to move into growth phase. So when the hair is rapidly moved into a shedding to a growth phase, there is a transient shedding that happens with minoxidil. So let me talk a little bit of the advantage of redensil versus minoxidil. So because redensil tends to energize the hair follicle, it provides nourishment to the hair, so it is a supportive treatment. It might take longer to see results with it, but it is a natural and a long-lasting and sustainable treatment option. Whereas with minoxidil, we've seen initially they can be improved hair growth. And that happens in 2-3 to three weeks, but there's also an increased shedding that can happen. How minoxidil works is by uh, moving the hair into a growth phase or the allergen phase. So, hi, I'm Dr. Riddhi Gulati and I'm a cosmetologist. So, uh, I'll be telling you some options apart from minidoxil that can work greatly on the improvement of your hair quality and density. Uh, there is a botanically derived compound, concussion of compounds called as RCP method or the Redensil, Capixin and Procapil method. Now, what is this RCP method about? So, RCP is basically, these compounds are derived from your uh, botanicals, they are derived from the plants and uh, they help in new hair growth. Now, the benefit of these compounds when we compare them with Minidoxil are that uh, they are lesser irritating on your scalp, they are lesser irritating on your skin. They work uh, not only on grade uh, 3, 4, 5 of androgenic alopecia, which is like a higher grade of hair loss, but they also work on the initial areas of your hair loss, like grade 1 and grade 2. Also, uh, these compounds are seen to have lesser dependency, like with minidoxil, we see more dependency in RCP method, we see less dependency of the patient on these uh, products. Uh, another thing that we've seen over time is in certain studies that RCP method when combined with minidoxil works as a great adjunctive therapy. So when these two components are used together, they work very well on both hair thinning and new hair growth. So now this brings us to the question that should you stop using minidopsin altogether? Should you just switch to the RCP method because it's a newer ingredient, it's creating more waves, it has more benefits? 
so that's not true see minidoxil has been widely used in our uh, country and throughout the world since over the past 30 years it is a fda approved product and it is still the gold standard for hair treatment uh, why minidoxil is good is because it works on very higher grades of hair loss these rcp methods they are still very newer in the market there's still a lot of research going on there are a lot of studies going on so what we recommend is that you use them as a combination therapy or also in patients where i feel that i want to withdraw the patient off minidoxil for some time because of maybe you know skin irritation or uh, maybe just long term side effects of minidoxil that i don't want the patient to have then i can put them on rcp method Also if you're somebody who's in their 20s or somebody in their early 30s and you're just having hair thinning you don't see any apparent hair loss but just hair thinning then the RCP method is something that we can start you off with instead of just simply putting you on minidoxil also another point that i would like to highlight here is that uh, both minidoxil and RCP are not gender based like we get this question a lot that is minidoxil meant only for men So it's meant for both men and women. The kind of hair loss that we see in both the cases are different, but uh, both the methods when used together can be better because still minidoxil is the gold standard for hair loss treatment. So what we usually do in our practices, we give you a combination of serums and we tweak them in between like we give you some off months and then we again start you on a certain compound and that is the best kind of therapy that works. So all said and done about hair loss I want you to like this video and please subscribe to our channel and also please tell us in comments if we do make video on any particular hair care issue or any newer compound